Today we're making a healthier version of peanut butter balls with no refined sugar, some healthy fats by adding some chopped walnuts and using dark chocolate to dip them. So because this one has peanut butter, we're doing it from my home kitchen, which is why it's a little darker. Our lighting kind of sucks in our kitchen, but here we go. I started by prepping all our ingredients just so this goes faster and it's nice and easy. So we're doing one cup of crispy rice cereal. You can use another crispy cereal if you like. You could use puffed quinoa if you don't wanna do the rice. Then we're gonna measure out one cup of peanut butter. This one doesn't matter if it's chunky or it's smooth because we're adding some crunchy bits into these peanut butter balls anyways. So use whatever you've got on hand. We're using one cup. You could also sub another nut butter or seed butter to make it peanut free. If you notice, I kinda tend to mix it up. Sometimes peanut butter, sometimes almond butter. Just depends on what we're feeling. So next we're gonna take a half cup of walnuts. Now these are pretty chopped already, but we're gonna chop them up even littler so they can distribute nicely throughout our mix. Okay, next we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of sea salt and a quarter cup of maple syrup. Now if you don't wanna use maple syrup, you could use honey, it won't be vegan anymore. Or you can also use a liquid sweetener substitute if you like. So now we're gonna add everything together in the bowl, our walnuts, our Rice Krispies, then our salt and our syrup. And then we're gonna give it a quick mix before we add in the peanut butter. Then we need to assess our consistency we have an optional up to two tablespoons of coconut flour that you can add here. Coconut flour is a very drying flour, so it will suck up some of the moisture and make your batter stiffer and easier to handle and roll into balls. So we're going to add, we're gonna start by adding one tablespoon of the coconut flour, sprinkling it over top and then mixing it in. And then you wanna wait a couple of minutes to give the coconut flour some time to suck up the moisture before you decide whether or not you want to add the other tablespoon or not. If you do them both at once and don't give it time, then you could end up with a super dry mix. It's not gonna stick together, it's gonna crumble. In that case, you can always add a little bit more moisture using maple syrup or a little bit more peanut butter. You just wanna make it handleable. So if you see, when I start rolling these balls, it's kind of sticky on my hand. So another trick is you can pop it in the fridge and fridge will sort of set it up a little bit so it's less sticky. So I use the one tablespoon of coconut flour combined with chilling it in the fridge for a couple of minutes and it made it nice and easy to roll out the rest of these balls. So we wanna take about a tablespoon of mix and we're gonna roll it into a ball and put it on a tray or a plate that we can pop into the fridge or freezer when we're done rolling them all. And when you've got it all divided up and rolled, we're gonna pop it in the fridge or freezer. I like the freezer because it's much faster. The freezer, you only need to leave it in for say 20 minutes for them to be nice and solid and ready for dipping. If you're gonna stick it in the fridge, it's gonna take about two hours. I guess it depends on where you have the extra room to stick a sheet tray. So we're taking about a cup of chocolate chips and a tablespoon of coconut oil, and we're gonna melt that. Now our microwave was on the fritz again. It keeps blowing our breaker in our house. So instead I double boilered this until it was nicely melted. But by using the double boiler, it took me a lot longer to melt the chocolate, which gave the peanut butter balls time to set up. So now we're ready to dip. I like to grab two spoons or two forks. Forks are nice because it lets the excess chocolate drain out. And I like to work with one at a time and you dunk it in and then you spoon some extra chocolate over top and then you pull it out. And I transfer back and forth between spoons or forks to get the excess off before putting it on the tray. And then if you want to top them with anything, we had some crushed peanuts and some flaky sea salt. So I got one of my kids to come help and sprinkle because your peanut butter balls being so cold is gonna help the chocolate set really fast. So you're either gonna have to add toppings with every single chocolate you dip, or you can have an extra set of hands. It's really nice to have the extra helper anyway because I find dipping chocolate always ends up messy. Sidebar, this is my son's Osmo salt. He was so excited that we found that in the States. It's Nick DiGiovanni's flaky sea salt, and he has been using it everywhere he possibly can. It's so fun. 
Dipping all these peanut butter balls reminds me of when I was a kid. My mom and my aunt would get together on one Saturday before Christmas and they would spend the entire day baking Christmas cookies to make up these really cute cookie tins for everyone in our family. And one of the cookies they made was these peanut butter balls, although they were not quite as healthy. They were loaded with icing sugar, but they were still one of my favorites. And I would go and show up and I would help and I always got to do the dipping. I don't know why, if they didn't like it, but I was always the dipper and the double boiler. But bonus side job, I got to be a taste tester too. So it's fun to make these now with my kids and make them a little bit healthier so that we can eat them more than just at Christmas. So now we've got them all done, we're gonna pop them in the fridge or freezer again just to set up. This won't take as long because you've already chilled your peanut butter balls. If you have any chocolate left over, what I like to do is get a sheet of parchment and then just pour the extra chocolate on it and let it set and then you can snap it into pieces and store it in an airtight container until next time you need to dip anything. Or if you only have a little bit left, what you can do is take a spoon and you can just drizzle it over top in a zigzag pattern over your peanut butter balls and make them look really pretty. So there you have it. Our peanut butter balls are all done. You can tell that they're set when your chocolate turns from shiny to dull go ahead and enjoy. Store these guys in an airtight container in your fridge for up to a week, or if it's gonna be longer, pop them in your freezer and they're good for up to a month or more. I love the snap of the chocolate with the creaminess of the peanut butter, but the crunchiness of the walnuts and the Rice Krispies, it's so good. And I love how she topped them with salt and peanuts. And if you love this recipe, you may love this one too. It's our irresistible no-bake peanut butter bars. You should check this video out next.